Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So we hear constant discussion about how Uber will be a big competitor to Tesla's robotaxi service. If you ask some of the Wall Street guys like Gary Black, but I think he is overlooking some very crucial things in that discussion. And this week we even had former Tesla employee trying to explain it and Uber CEO himself was out admitting this is years out in the future for Uber. They simply will not be able to pivot fast enough or build the whole infrastructure as so far no one else is even close to Tesla's cost of deploying a robo-taxi fleet. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. As we had Jörg Milburn, the former Tesla employee, wrote on X. Former Tesla leader here. These are my thoughts on Tesla versus Uber debate on autonomous vehicles. Uber's mode, Uber's strength is having vehicle saturation in given markets. This guarantees that any time and anywhere you will get picked up in a single digit minute, the network effects. The scarce resources here is drivers on your app. Drivers can switch app fairly easy. Acquiring drivers for your platform is hard and expensive. They will choose the ecosystem with the highest total revenue, i.e. the most saturated player in the geo. Winner takes all. When you eliminate the need for drivers, the moat cracks wide open. Uber's physical operation. Uber does no physical operation. It drivers does all the real work. Uber's is just a marketplace with payment and customer support. They own no physical infrastructure. Tesla's operation, Tesla has extensive experience running physical operation, making them ultra efficient and building very virtually integrated software to support them. They have plentiful real estates in the market like service centers, charging partners, body shops, stores and much more. Tesla has a frontline team that knows how to run physical operation from optimizing how to load trucks on ships to how to run super high volume delivery operations with only a few Staffs. Tesla is a formidably strong player in this aspect and will be able to figure out physical operation of the robotaxi fleet. Tesla's economics, Tesla's real estate is mostly a sunk cost. Tesla knows how to make cars cheaply at scale very important, like no one else in the West. They are also super cheap to run and generally requires low maintenance. They won't have to pay the middleman marketplace fee. They will charge on site which are already profitable and using service infrastructure that already exist. Competing with Tesla on cost will be almost impossible for any entrant be it a middleman like Uber or provider like Waymo. Even if you build the infrastructure that Tesla has, you will never be able to optimize it like Tesla. Reliability and resilience. The Achilles heel of Tesla's operation, which current hardware is environmental resilient. Anyone who has driven a Tesla with full self driving knows that on occasion, sun glare or camera occlusion, moisture, mud, snow, condensation will prevent the system from working. If you live in Phoenix, Texas, California, this will mostly not be an issue. But in certain regions, it's highly problematic. Just ask the Northern Europeans. Would you still choose a Tesla robotaxi if you get stuck 1% of the trips? The problem is mechanical in nature and therefore probably solvable, but might require hardware changes. But we have just seen Tesla has also made the new Tesla Model Y's side cameras being self-cleaning. So they are already making some solutions. But as he wrote, in conclusion, if Tesla follow a saturation strategy in each market they enter and then squeeze out rivals via price, then the market is theirs to take. There may be some hiccups in the short term with reliability, robustness of their stack, but these will be ironed out in due course. If, when they solve it, then the potential is quite unbound for them dominating in this space. And ended up with, sorry, Gary Black. <laughs> but Gary did reply, you're not giving Uber credit for its 170 million monthly active users, which brings Uber's cost per ride way down. 
Tesla won't have a network anywhere near that large, so it's hard to see how it can have cost equivalent to Uber if both are offering unsupervised autonomy as option on either app. And York replied, not sure how lots of active users lower the cost of rights itself, perhaps by higher utilization rate? Even then, this phenomena would be transitory. Tesla has the brand strength to attract the users. They just need to go city by city, ensuring the density is there before moving on to the next. I doubt users will have any loyalty to Uber if you get a service that is equivalent and far cheaper. Yes, I completely agree here. And what I think Gary is missing here is that Uber has no physical infrastructure. As Jürgen also pointed out, they only have an app and the drivers are the real asset, but those drivers will become obsolete as soon as we have robo-taxis on the street. And then Uber will have to build out the whole infrastructure from scratch. And as Jörg pointed out, Uber has no experience in this at all, but Tesla has. And we have just heard that Uber CEO said this is of course the way it is going, to autonomous vehicles, but it will take many years to build out the whole infrastructure and get all this to work. Exactly. Even Uber knows this. But the cost, as Jürgen points out, is one of the biggest points in my opinion. As sure, Uber can partner up with Waymo, a supplier of robotaxis, but they are not the manufacturer. They have the supplier like Seeker in China to provide them with EVs that Waymo put their $40,000 sensors on. So when import duties and sensors and all that put on the Seeker van, well, it will cost Waymo about $120,000. But Tesla will be able to produce a cybercap for about $15,000 at scale. No contest here. And then what? Uber will have to buy those cars or let Waymo run them? I don't know how they will make this work, of course, but they will never be cost effective with Tesla as both Waymo and Uber and Seeger have to make money on this, right? And Seeger is no big automaker. They only produce 222,000 vehicles in 2024 and are still not profitable themselves. So how this partnership between Seeker, Waymo and Uber could ever be competitive on price with Tesla that has the vehicle that cost eight times less for them to put on the street and Tesla already knows how to do this at scale, they will be spitting out cybercaps faster than they can spit out Model Ys and that is over a million a year. Waymo has a thousand vehicles in their fleet at the moment. And that is after seven years of operation. So Uber can't just say to Waymo, we need 10,000 robotaxis deployed in Chicago because Tesla is deploying cybercaps there now. Well, then Waymo will have to start mapping out the whole area they want to work in and order 10,000 vehicles for Seeker and so on. So they will never be able to roll all of that out before Tesla would easily had put 10,000 units in Chicago. That is not even a week's work of Tesla's Model Y production. And the Cybercab is aiming to be twice the production of the Model Y. And that is just the beginning. So for Uber to partner up with Waymo will not make them competitive as they move way too slow and their business model is still not profitable after seven years of operation. And they think adding another partner in that loop that also want to be making money is going to make that happen? How? So the only way I can see how Uber has any chance of survival as none of the US actually car makers is anywhere near a robotaxi solution. And they are still losing money on their EV, so they kind of have to fix that problem first. But they have all given up on the robotaxi venture. GM closed down Cruise, Ford closed down Argo AI with Volkswagen that Gary also thought would have robotaxis in the streets in 2022. So Gary has been wrong on this before. But anyway, the only solution I see for Uber is getting cybercaps. And I don't think Tesla want to partner up with them as they have nothing to offer Tesla, as Tesla already have millions of users on their Tesla app, not just the millions with the Teslas themselves, but also all the other EV owners that have access to Tesla's charging network. They all have the Tesla app. 
So they have millions of users already with an account and credit card details ready to go in the Tesla app. So they don't need Uber's 170 million monthly active users as Gary talks about. Because firstly, Tesla will start out slow in one city and then move on to the next. So they don't need 170 million users, but only a few thousand users in one city at a time as they ramp up building out the infrastructure together with the ramp of cybercabs. But if Tesla will sell cybercabs to people like you and I, like they have said they would, Uber can of course do that. But as I made a whole video about, that does not mean that Uber can just start building out a cybercab network of robotaxis in other cities that Tesla has not yet occupied. As Uber will be missing the infrastructure of the charge network, as the cybercab will only be able to charge on Tesla's wireless charging network. And Tesla will, of course, build that out where Tesla themselves starts putting out cybercabs. So Tesla will dictate where this is and probably just saturate that market before many other businesses like Uber can come in and take market share. And Tesla can, of course, use their existing supercharging stations and add a few wireless charging stores there for the cybercap, quickly getting their cybercap charging network up and running, including their self-cleaning robot, of course. Uber doesn't have any of this know-how or infrastructure and is not a manufacturer of cars and will therefore never be able to compete. And Tesla can just come to a place like Austin, where Uber still has about 15,000 to 20,000 Uber drivers, and just start ramping up cybercabs there and completely outperform someone like Uber that still has to pay a human driver. Tesla could pretty fast get 20,000 cybercabs to Austin, and Uber will simply be pushed out as they can't compete on their current model against the affordable cybercab. Because, as Uber CEO has just said, it will take them years for Uber to implement robotaxis with a partner like Waymo or someone else. And Tesla could do this extremely fast. And Waymo, which also operates a few hundred cars in Austin, will also be completely outperformed as their cars cost almost eight times more than Tesla and they have have to pay for charging and cleaning and infrastructure, which Tesla don't. And Tesla already have the service centers and people to help out. So the infrastructure cost for Waymo is also much more expensive than Tesla. There's just no way that Waymo, with a few hundred very expensive cars that can't drive you everywhere, can compete with a better and more affordable option that can drive you everywhere. So if you want to take a trip from Austin to Texas, no problem in a cybercab. For Waymo, it's a big, expensive problem to solve with geofencing between these two cities. They can't do it today. So Waymo is also expensive and slow moving and therefore also not something that Uber will actually be able to use as it will work too slow and Tesla will control the whole rollout of the cybercabs so Uber will not be able to use Tesla's own cybercabs against them. And Tesla will come so fast that Uber will not be ready with autonomous alternatives. So sure, as Gary says, if both Uber and Tesla offer the same unsupervised robotaxi service, why should Uber not succeed as well? Well, as Uber CEO just explained, Gary, they don't have unsupervised robotaxis and it will take them years to get that up and running and the whole infrastructure and so on. But Tesla could start implementing that in 2025 and Uber's version will always be more expensive as they need a lot of partners to make it work as they are not a car manufacturer and not a robo taxi developer or a charging provider or any of that. They only have an app, nothing else. So they don't have an unsupervised robo taxi. But Tesla is just on the cusp of solving that. And then Tesla will just slowly push out Uber of every major city one at a time as they have no robo taxis or infrastructure to deploy. And these 170 million users will quickly drop the expensive ride hailing service with a human inside for the cheaper and better option where you get your own private little autonomous limousine. I personally just don't see how Uber will ever be able to compete and pivot fast enough for them to stay in business. But let's see how it all plays out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>